The great swamps and the wide river stretches are the areas where a scout exercises its power being satisfied with the easy prey. It is a raptor that flies around hoping to find some dying fish floating on the water. If it gets lucky, the black kite will carry the prey on its claws and eat it in the air. This is opportunism at its best, and the kites are experts at taking advantage of nature's chances. The grey heron goes directly to the point, to slaughter without remorse. Even if it does get tiring, soaring up with its nearly two meter long wings wet. Reservoirs like La Serena, one of the largest in Europe, favor the settlement of the cormorant. This bird can submerge down to 10 meters deep to pull out large fish. Its presence is alarming to the marine life because every day it wolves down the equivalent of its weight in fish, about three kilograms. It is noteworthy the pressure that the whiskered terns exercise on the eel. And the routine walks of the egret are also evil. It walks slowly with its beak facing down until it deals a deadly blow before swallowing the fish, it shakes it to finish it off and it makes sure the head goes down first to avoid choking. Water does not last forever. The rivers, the swamps, the ponds and the wetlands get smaller or dry up, even though they seem boundless. This means that its inhabitants, reptiles, amphibians or fish will evaporate and as a result, food will become scarce for a variety of birds and mammals. Fortunately, the droughts are not endless either. When the fall arrives, the biological cycle gets renewed thanks to the magical drops of water. Then life reawakens with a heartbreaking force. It is then that a new crucial phase of the game of life, the animal courtship, takes place. The bellowing of the king of the forest overcomes the meadows. It is the raw call during the rut, the passionate ball of the deer, when the impressive males intone their thunderous love concert. The purpose is to claim their territory and to group the harems. The most forceful will pair off better, since the females prefer the ones that are louder. After the display of passion, the most difficult part begins. The clash between the suitors in a fight that will only be a show of authority and strength. The antlers get mangled and crash violently. The warlike courage reverberates in the air but nobody gets injured. The terrible confrontation is just aimed to humiliate the opponent, although sometimes the fighters get stuck together and die, unable to separate themselves. The wild reproductive instinct is the best well-expressed display of the natural pride, and it is in the Sierra de Gredos, amidst cork and home oaks, where it achieves its purest state. In the air, the marsh harriers cease their hunting over the reed bed to carry out their courtship dance. Their pirouettes 
are a very exciting sight. The male displays confirm what these air acrobats are capable of doing for love. The dates of the great crested grebe are less flamboyant. They face each other with the neck stuck up and make their decorative head feathers stand on end. Ostentatious rituals are fostered in the famous circling displays of the great bustard. The males shake their wings, open up their tails over their backs and turn completely white. The females will choose the most convincing one. No other event in the life of the great bustards is more important than the marital flirting. From now on, this couple will be inseparable. And, as it is typical of the otters, they will frolic playfully in the water. Very close by, the polecats repair their sets over the bed of a stream. Although the polecat is a lonely animal, when it is in heat, it becomes very sociable and establishes with the female a relationship of complicity. Together they fit out their home, where they will have their annual litter. The long-tailed tit collects feathers to decorate the interior of its nest. After a month's work, the bowl-shaped nest, lined with lichen, will be a small fort attached to the tree, with just one entrance and completely blended with the branches. One of the most original architects of nature is the tiny pendulum tit. It picks up traces of straw to weave a hanging basket capable of withstanding winds of 80 kilometers per hour. The female griffin vulture is already hatching its chicks. The male does not stray far. The chambers of the vulture are made with plant matter and that is why they make continuous trips to bushy areas where they pick the needed branches to make their bedding niche stronger. This can easily be up to two meters wide. 